That is the question. Whether tis Nova in the mind suffer, the slings and arrows of my greatest fortune, to take arms against a sea of trouble by opposing, in them to die, to sleep, no more. By sleep to say we end, the heartaches and thousand natural shocks that, that flesh is there too. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished to die, to sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub, for in that sleep of death what dreams may come, when we have shuffled off this mortal coil, must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life, for who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pains and despised love the laws lay, the insolence of office that spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quiet to snake with the fair bodkin, who would fall to bear to front Wept under a weary life, but that the dread is something after death. The undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns puzzles the will and makes us rather to bear the ills we have than to fly to others we know not of. Thus, the conscience does make cowards of us all, and thus the naked hue of resolution is sickly over with pale cast of thought. An enterprise of great pigeon moment, and with this regard, the currents turn hurry and lose with the name of action. Betrayal. It swims through my veins, fills my every thought. You may wonder if the stars are fire. You may wonder if the sun moves across the sky. You may wonder if the truth is a liar, but never wonder if I love. Dearest Hamlet, it pains me to say that I am beginning to wonder. Had you ever loved me? Or was I a mere game, a simple pleasure to be pushed aside? The voices echo throughout the halls of, does she really believe that a prince as high as he could love someone as low as her, their words? were buried in disgust, laced with pity, but not once did I question you, my love. I learned to listen with my ears closed, to block out their never-ending whispers, their attempts to cut me was of no use, and for a while I felt shatterproof, indestructible. I took pride in my verbal shield, told myself no words would ever scratch me again. This is until those voices stopped being echoes in the halls and began being yours. My mother once told me what one did caused more pain than their words. So why is it that the sounds slipping off of your tongue are causing cuts deeper than any words ever have? I've tried to decide my love. Is it the words? Or is it the fact that it's your words? The smile that once lifted me to the heavens have suddenly become the ones whose lips are drowning me in the pits of hell, my love. Someday your words won't hurt me. Someday your voice will merge with the others, become another echo in the hall. And on that day, I will stand with my head up high. The sounds escaping your lips will be but a mere blur, and I, Ophelia, will be set free. But will this day ever come? Will I be able to see you lose care for me? Push me aside, for I am a frail woman, just like Laertes, just like my father. Will I be able to listen to you? Speak to me as you do a servant when I approach you. Watch the light drown from your eyes. Should I have to? Perhaps it would be easier to block out their words, your words, if I could not hear them at all. Let the whispers become screams as they say, Dearest Ophelia, oh, how we have wronged you. Perhaps then you will stand at my corpse, clutch my lifeless body in your arms. Perhaps then I will be able to stop hearing them and start hearing me.
great. This is what you call stage combat. Stage combat is when actors use a technique to portray the action in the scene. Uh, I would like two volunteers to come on stage. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Revenge is foul and most unnatural murder, or so he said. Indeed, for the unjust murder of my innocent father, I shall bring to his rest the soul the corpse of his father. I shall decapitate King Claudius, and the castle floor shall be covered in his filthy blood, or else I will shame the name of the valiant King Hamlet. There was nothing wrong in the action. Was there a justifiable reason to spare the new king, that foul-brained scum who dared to assassinate my father, who dared to marry his widow, who dared to take right to his abundant wealth? Was there truly a reason to forgive him? I would drown him in his own crimson blood had I been given the opportunity, but patience. The right time comes with patience, so I remain. With every second time took, I was slowly being eaten away by the unquenchable fire that thirsted for revenge. I prepared, I planned, what had I done for this fated revenge? I dreamed of the day my sword would be covered in Claudius' blackened blood. I dreamed of the day I would color the castle in the scarlet shades of fresh blood. I dreamed of the day I would bring justice to my father's soul. If justice was all I sought, then why did I deteriorate in my own quest for vengeance? Why? I assure you, I am not mad. I am not mad, not I. This madness is part of the plan. This madness is to fool Claudius, to frighten him. If my madness was meant to harm Claudius, then why did it kill Ophelia? If the poison drink was meant to poison me, then why was my mother killed? Though I have finally educated Claudius, my raging fire remains. No one is satisfied. Not me. I do not feel joy. I do not feel pride. I feel nothing. I feel miserable. And now we dying, having emerged victorious in my task and my vengeance. And now I cannot help but wonder, should I have taken revenge? Were the many lives lost worth the price of one? Were all the murders committed worth the desire for vengeance? Was it worth throwing away my life to bring peace to my father's soul? Alas, here I lay dying, being unable to bring forth to my father the fresh fruit of our revenge. This consequence is no different from me taking my own life. In the end, I am venturing to that unknown world everyone fears. In the end, I am dying. <coughs> I'm pleased that I died, having killed Claudius before myself, but now the, the revenge has no purpose. Because Prince Fortinbras of Norway has taken the throne of Elsinore. In the end, I have brought nothing back to my father. Nothing. I have brought back nothing but the blackened soul that once belonged to Claudius. Indeed, revenge is but a double-bladed sword. It is tempting, yes, but it only hurts whoever is foolish enough to grasp its blade. I have done nothing but tear apart my own life with my own two hands. But I gained my revenge. I lost my wife, but I gained my revenge. I pray my father now finds peace in the fact that his son is surely to rot in hell, having accomplished his task. I pray my father is satisfied, having known he destroyed my life the moment his soul crept up to me and whispered, revenge his foul and most unnatural murder.